Hello. So, I've had the Access virus for quite a few years now. One of the big problems with the virus is the display. So most of the indigos over time, the displays will go really, really dim. Another thing with the indigo is you've got a very textured front panel and those front panels tend to collect a lot of dirt. So we're going to give that a clean. And on top of that, um, some of these knobs have become very, very shaky. Now, I'm not going to do a full repair of those today. Um, really to repair it, you've either got to glue the knobs in place, which I don't want to do right now, or you have to buy the uh, replacement um, potentiometers to swap out. Now, at the time of recording this, we're still in uh, pandemic mode in Australia and getting parts here and getting any part seems to be really difficult. So we're going to do our best with those. We'll do our best with the display. And like I say, we'll just give it an overall clean. So let's get started. So we have the virus on the bench, or in my case, the kitchen table, and now it's time to actually get things repaired. So I didn't show how bad this display was earlier on. You can see here, you can barely see anything on here whatsoever. So let's get this out, let's get this apart, and let's get this happening. So the first thing I've got to do is remove every one of these knobs. Now, some of these, as you can see, are seriously stuck on. We'll deal with those in a few moments, but uh, normally what I try and do is just remove the knobs that are relatively easy, first of all. And then once we've actually got those off, I'll deal with the more stubborn knobs a bit later. So the last one's very stuck, as you can see. So what I'll do is I'll actually grab a plastic spludger type thing and try and rotate that around underneath to actually lift the knob off. And this actually worked quite well. Still using a bit more force than I would like, but um, it was either that or I wouldn't be able to get the knobs off. So time to take out the screws. Now the screws on the back of the virus are always a bit tricky to know which ones to leave in and which ones to actually take out. So I take out a few. I then uh, see if I can get the front panel up. If I can't get the front panel up, then I take out some more screws. So no luck there. Rinse and repeat, take out some more screws. So you can see there's a group of screws down the bottom and in the middle, um, both horizontally and vertically. Normally they're there for the key bed, so I'll try and leave those in because I don't want to have to deal with a loose key bed as well as a loose control surface. So you can see I've been in here previously, I've actually marked up the cables as to which connector they need to be reconnected into. One of the crazy things is, always inside the virus, they seem to use a toothpick to hold on the power switch. Now this isn't the original power switch, it was replaced before I actually got the virus, but um, all is good and let's take off the main board. So even more screws now to remove. And I just try and keep the screws separate in separate containers as I go along. That way I know which screws belong in which area and yet I don't end up getting screws poking through the uh, front panel or something horrible like that. There's always one screw you forget. So you will have noticed I was lifting that up really carefully before uh, seeing that it was loose. Once again, me using completely the wrong tools for the job, but I didn't have a uh, spanner that would fit these little nuts, so I was sort of without a choice. So one of the challenges is the display board is actually slightly bigger 
than the modern boards you can get from RS Online or Element 14, all of those places. So I was watching a video from a guy called Synthesizer Keith, and what he decided to do was instead of trying to bodge the display in, was to actually remove the backlight that was on the failing display and replace it with the backlight from the new display. And that worked really well for him. So I'm hoping I can pretty much do exactly the same thing. Now, one of the challenges you're always gonna have is these things use what are called zebra strips or little carbon impregnated strips to actually transfer the data to the actual LCD display itself. Now, sometimes those strips go bad, especially when you've been in playing with them. So I'm hoping this is gonna go well. I had to pull that backlight reflector off. It was actually taped on and it was pretty terrifying. At any moment, this whole thing could have been over. Looking back in retrospect, I probably could have just left the existing reflector. There was no problem there and just similar to what I'm doing there, just replace the actual uh, light itself. Anyway, no harm done, let's give it a test. And with a bit of zooming in, you will see that this actually worked. So super happy at this point. As you can also see, it is incredibly bright compared to the old one. So time to clean the front panel. I just used some soap and a toothbrush. To actually uh, try and get in there and really get the dirt out. It sort of worked well. I had to do a few rounds to actually uh, get it as clean as I would like, but uh, massive improvement on what it looked like previously. So now to take a look at uh, those super wobbly potentiometers. Uh, first of all, I'm just giving them a clean with some IPA. And then uh, on a previous virus I had many, many years ago, you were able to just push down that metal tab right there and it would actually uh, make the pots a lot more stable. Unfortunately in this case not quite as successful. Anyway we'll keep going. So we're back in the studio everything's so much better. Um, that pot never really got any better than it was. Slightly maybe. This one's quite improved and the rest of them that I gave a little push to, yeah, they're gonna last quite a bit of time. So if you've got a better idea of the way I could have done that display, please let me know in the comments down below because I'm sure eventually I'll be back in here and doing the same thing again. And on top of that, if you want me to do another demo with the virus, also let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll chat to you next time. See ya.